Robert Moses was a political genius. As I said, looking into him, I realized how little I knew about how political power works, how he knew everything. He thinks he's going to get elected to something. He runs for governor of New York State, and people don't like him, and he loses by what I think is still the largest majority anyone ever lost by a, a state election in New York. Thinks he's going to be mayor of New York. He's not going to be mayor of New York. He realizes he has to get power to build these great public works, these huge public works, somewhere. He takes a yellow legal pad and goes into a little room next to his office and sits there by himself and drafts legislation which basically create public authorities in the modern form. Before that, they were just entities that sold bonds to build a bridge or a tunnel, collected tolls until the bonds were paid off and went out of existence. He created legislation that said these authorities will never go out of existence. And as long as he is head of the authorities, he's going to have the power of the authorities. And these are power authorities, of course, you know, for about 30 years, if you were paying a toll to, and, at any bridge or tunnel in New York City, you were basically paying it directly to Robert Moses. He had more money to build things than the city did. You think you know what political power is. You don't have the faintest idea it is. You think you're in a democracy, and political power comes from being elected, from the votes that people cast at the ballot box. Here's a guy who was never elected to anything, and he had more power than anyone who was, more power than any mayor more power than any governor, more power than any mayor and governor combined. And he held this power for 44 years, and with it, he shaped all New York City. And you, Robert Caro, don't have any idea where this power comes from. And I also realized neither does anybody else. That's when I decided to do the power broker.